complaints, life is just a sick and twisted game. That guy over there is wired wrong, or as even Shakespeare wrote, as flies to wanton boys are we to the gods, they kill us for sport. Number one story in the countdown tonight, we've got what might be bad news for you. There is a 20% chance we are living inside a computer simulation. Yes, you, me, Lindsay Lohan, everybody. The classic answer from Rene Descartes to the question of existence, I think, therefore I am. Perhaps more correctly stated as, another guy clicks a mouse, therefore I am. The theory by Nick Bostrom, a philosopher at Oxford University and fleshed out by the New York Times science writer John Tierney yesterday, that technological advances will someday produce for us a computer so powerful that it could simulate a complex world with billions of creatures of some sort in it. Yes, sort of like the Matrix, except that the virtual people would have no physical counterpart, just virtual beings in a giant virtual world. Advanced civilizations of real people, the argument goes, would create these simulations to better understand their own evolution or just for S and giggles, like a super, super advanced version of The Sims. Ultimately, says Bostrom, there would be far more virtual people in various computer simulations than there are real people in a real world, and therefore, there's a decent chance that some entity somewhere has already invented those supercomputers, that they've already perfected one of those mammoth simulated world games, and that we're in it. Professor Bostrom of Oxford puts the chances at about 20%. You could argue it's more like 50-50. After all, if such a computer simulation could someday exist, it's equally possible that it already does exist and that we are already in it. Which would at least explain that metallic taste you get sometimes in your mouth. I'm joined here by William Irwin, professor of philosophy at King's College in Pennsylvania, editor of More Matrix and Philosophy, Revolutions and Reloaded Decoded. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me, Keith. So we're part of a, a computer program. You would have thought this would have gotten larger play on the news. It's possible, right? Yeah. Uh, the idea is that if you were in a really high-tech, sophisticated virtual reality program, you wouldn't know it uh, as portrayed in The Matrix. An old idea, as you mentioned, going all the way back to Rene Descartes. The new twist on it that Bostrom puts in an essay that's reprinted in my book uh, is that there are three possibilities, really, uh, that uh, technologically mature societies go extinct before they reach the stage mm -hmm. of being able to produce these kinds of things, in which case, well, nuclear holocaust, that sort of thing, or second option, that they uh, simply wouldn't do this or would find it boring or ethically troublesome. Yeah, or like that's ever stopped science before. Yeah, uh, unlikely. I've put that as a low probability. Yeah. And then the third one is that uh, they would get to this point of this technology and then perhaps there would make these worlds. And so if there were, say, a billion people in such a world, each of whom is running a virtual world uh, with people in it, uh, say a billion people, it becomes a billion to one shot that you're one of the people <laughs> in the real world. So... Uh, uh, but but this is, I mean this is a basic theory. That, I mean we've seen twilight zones like this. We're in somebody else's dream. We're in somebody else's little bead of sweat near their brow. The entire universe is th actually this big. All of these things. But this is the first time that it really has sort of matched up with technology that people at home can understand. If there's a Sims game we could be in a super version of a Sims game. That's what this That's is about, right. right? It started with Pong. We moved uh, 20 years later up to the Sims. We're amazed at that. Imagine what 100 years of computer technology from now will produce probably virtual reality games with beings in it that have minds and consciousness just like ours and who think they're in the real world. And they'll vastly outnumber the number of people in the real world. So is human existence a research experiment? Is it, is it a video game? Is somebody winning? Is there a high score? What? Who knows, right? Uh, but in any case, uh, we're not the players in it if this scenario holds true. We're simply being played. We are the pawns in chess, if you will. Uh, and so who knows what the point of the game is? Someone's science experiment, someone's hobby, whatever the case might be. So one of my favorite jokes has always been, yeah, there is evidence that there's a god, but there's just as much evidence that it's clearly a part-time job. That would explain everything if, it's, if this is even, even if this is a research project somewhere, the guy goes home at night and lots of things, it could be a million years in between visits, right? It, it makes a lot of sense when you think about it, right? The classic question in philosophy is how could this world be the product of an all-knowing, all-loving, all-powerful God? It takes a lot of faith to believe that. However, if this world is simply a virtual simulation, maybe it's run by a creator uh, who's forgotten about it or uh, a part-time creator, and it begins to explain uh, what? Uh, deadly hurricanes, uh, cancer, 
uh, the Lindsay Lohan scenario and, American and, Idol. and the yeah. ongoing popularity of American Idol. You just to screw with the characters to make them react to, to yeah, bad situations. Yeah, it's a situations. glitch in the matrix. That explains the popularity there. What happens if we are simulations and we all read this piece in your book or the, the, the version that uh, Mr. Tierney did in the New York Times yesterday and we all figure it out and go, yeah, this, is, this actually rings true to my experience and everybody holds up a big sign up like this that says, hey, pal, we figured out this is a computer simulation. What happens then? I would caution against that because <laughs> uh, when uh, my parents found out that I didn't believe in Santa Claus anymore, the gifts start, uh, stopped coming quite as quickly and quite as well. If we let the, uh, the maker of this game know that we are on to him, the uh, game might be over. So I suggest that we go along with things, even though there's a 50-50 chance, perhaps, that this is such a game. Uh, let's play along. Right. I mean, what would you do if the Sims that you were playing with suddenly all held up signs? You'd run out of the room screaming and I never do so. anything for yeah. them. Yeah. But, but in, in like 10 seconds, does this actually change from the philosophical point of view the meaning of life? It doesn't, even if it is a creation in a machine, it doesn't matter, does it? I don't think so, no. We still would want to live our lives the way we've always thought that they should be lived, uh, with great variety among viewpoints there, of course. We just have to worry about viruses and, uh, and being downloaded too many yeah, times, I suppose. Yeah, there are certain inconveniences. Professor William Irwin of uh, Philosophy and uh, also the editor of the book The Matrix and Philosophy. Great thanks for your time. Thanks, thanks for so much, in. Keith. Boy, are the intelligent design folks going to freak out over this.